Hello there and welcome. In this episode, we're talking about the pest flatworm, which you get in your reef aquariums. Now this little guy can become quite a problem in your home aquarium for two reasons. Firstly, they reproduce really quickly. This is a problem because they will cover all of your rock work and also have the potential to smother your corals and any good algae that you have in your aquarium. Of course, your corals and your algae will require light to survive, so being smothered by these small red flatworms will eventually kill them. Now, in America, there is a product called Flatworm Exit and it's by Salifert. This is quite an effective treatment which can be used by pretty much anyone. However, in the UK, we don't have access to this chemical because it's an illegal product. So therefore, we do not have this magic bullet available to us. As you can see, this tank has got a fairly high population of red planaria flatworms, and I'm not particularly happy about it. Believe it or not, it was worse. I've been working quite hard to get rid of these, and I am slowly winning the battle. And here's how I've done it. Firstly, I've added livestock, which may or may not feed off of these flatworms. I'm not entirely sure if they do or not, However, my investigations online provided some information that at least one, if not all of these species will feed on planaria if they feel like it. Firstly, we have wrasse. And the two best wrasse for this job in particular are the Malinaris and the Jade wrasse. Other livestock which is good for eating planaria are dragonettes, in particularly mandarins, and in even more particular, the green spotted mandarins. However, again, whether these do or don't eat planaria is hit and miss, but there are many reports of them doing so and I have seen a few of them in this aquarium pick at them so they may take one or two here or there. Now the absolute number one king of eating red flatworms is actually a nudibranch and it is very hard to come by and that is the blue velvet nudibranch, Chilidonura variants. This is a black nudibranch with a shield like head and very neon blue lines running through it. It's actually an incredibly nice looking nudibranch and this will definitely eat red flatworms. So another way of removing flatworms is just by doing that, removing them manually. Now how I've done that is by siphoning them out myself. To do this you use a airline tube and at the end of it you attach a filter sock. The idea of this is that the bag will capture the planaria but as you can see it's into the sump so you don't actually lose any water which allows you to siphon the tank indefinitely and not be removing any water as you would do during a water change. Now this is quite a lengthy process and it's something that you're going to need to do pretty much every day until your flatworms have gone or until they're at a very low level where you can accept their existence. All you do is siphon along the rockwork, siphon along any algae you've got in there, you can hover above the sand and take any that are off the sand and of course you can siphon them straight off the glass. Now I wouldn't recommend siphoning them off corals unless they are a pretty tough coral because there is a bit of suction to this and you probably would tear any fleshier corals apart. Now I did a good siphon for maybe half an hour on this tank and removed quite a few planaria. Once you open the bag, as you can see, it's a horrible sight and it is pretty smelly. So all you have to do with this now is wash it under a tap. Now the last way of removing planaria is by freshwater dipping. These red flatworms hate being put into fresh water. In fact, within maybe five to 10 seconds, they explode. So this is an excellent way of killing them. All you have to do is take out your object covered in red flatworms, dip them into some RO water, wait 10 seconds and remove it. You'll notice all of the red flatworms will come off and your water may go a horrible red color. Now the red color is the poisons from the flatworms being released as they die, because these flatworms release poison when they are stressed as a protective measure. So obviously you want to remove all the red flatworms before putting the object back into your tank. Obviously make sure that thing you're dipping can cope with being dipped. Some corals won't be able to cope with it and some macroalgae tend to melt if they're freshwater dips too often or for too long. In addition to this, if you're dipping live rock, be aware that you'll be removing some of the bacteria and probably all of the copepods and amphipods living within the rock. So it's kind of a last resort thing to do. So if you've got red flatworms in your tank, I suggest you use a combination of all three of these measures because you're not going to be able to get rid of flatworms just by using one. Now to prevent flatworms getting into your tank in the first place, Make sure you coral dip any new additions or freshwater dip anything that can stand it as this will remove any flatworms present. So if you've enjoyed this video, please like it. Also subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of this kind of content. Thank you for watching and happy fish keeping.